Why are you licking my gobstopper? Strike that. Reverse it. Nazi punks! Lick my plate! Raining! Tell me 10 minutes for a second, Steven Soderbergh. Ocean's Eleven movie. It's all slick and funny and stuff. Then just the most horrific shit imaginable happened. It's because that's what the fucking movie's about, you asshole. Uh, this fucking guy. The tree of life is freaking awesome. I'm sure you think it is. Made it to black. Oh, you are I'm fucking this up. Beyond slime. In my basement. Oh, but I got the right answer. Oh, no, you fucking didn't, mate. Jared Leto, man. You're the worst, dude. If you, if, if you ever listen to this, Jared Leto, you are the fucking worst. Like, but I'd rather watch that dude, the English dude, who looks like he's not done yet. <laughs> so, hell, counselor! We are now in the ninth circle! The circle of traitors! Traitors to the country! Traitors to the fellow man! Traitors to God! She looked like a stun mullet, mate! That's a, a, a what? This movie is the opposite of getting on you. <laughs> Thank you to all our listeners who have been listening to us for over a year now. Subscribe to us on Apple iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and any other platform that has podcasts. Visit our Patreon page, become a Patreon, get more additional content. Again, we appreciate you listening and keep watching those movies. Now, on with the show. Alright, ready? We're in. What number is this? One of who fucking gets a shit. One of four, one of four. Get over here! Isn't that what is it? What is Mortal Kombat? See, I've already forgotten. What is it, Lee? That's it, you got it right. Alright. Get over here! It's Tales from the Video Store number 104! And we're back after a little hiatus. How we doing, boys? Doing great. Well, what's been going on, man, in everybody's life? I know we've been off for a little bit, uh, doing uh, all sorts of crazy stuff, man. What's What's been new? Not much. Yeah, not much. I went wow. on a vacation, I think... Since the last yeah. time. Yeah, you told me you were going to call me and tell me about how awesome it was, and I should go, but you never yeah. did. No, I didn't. Fuck you. Yeah. I, and, I also uh, took a quick vacation down to Florida a few weeks ago. I yeah. saw that with the alligators. Okay. Yeah, I went to Gatorland. Did the, you didn't get pulled into the water and flipped a couple of times? No, no it's, uh, uh, it's pretty safe. It's, it's only slightly shady, although I can imagine in like the 60s and 70s it was extremely unsafe. Because there was one point we were probably three or four feet from alligators. Yeah, I saw a couple of pictures where they're all like yeah. just sitting up on the shore behind you, like just waiting yeah. to eat you. That's where you. That's where you toss some uh, uh, toss some meat. Uh, but yeah, I bet in the sixties and seventies it was it was all kinds of unsafe. But it was fun though. It was it was fun a fun afternoon. Nice. Yeah, it looks it looks yeah. pretty cool. All right, well, let's get into it, man. We uh, we have not been talking movies for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, I know. What is that? Where are we? Are you talking to your sister? You are talking to... Has something changed in a month? No. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Shut the fuck up. All right, I'll cut it off. <laughs> I know a goddamn business, my fuck. I'll edit. Hey, uh, all right, so we are doing a double, uh, double take this week. We're doing... Perdido, Durango, and Mortal Kombat. But first... Say that one more time. Perdito, per, Durango. Perdito, Durango. <laughs> and Mortal Kombat. Oh, Two shit. totally different movies. That's true. Completely different movies. And how we ended up with these two, I have no idea. Well, it's because of the timing of the last time we were supposed to meet was going to coincide with, with when Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat came out, but that was a fucking six weeks ago. So, God, it really has, man. I, I, I hey. Hey, I will say this. It's been me. I've been really busy. But it's pretty cool that it, uh, on HBO Max, the show that I'm uh, editing is on HBO Max. So when you finish watching Mortal Kombat, if you need some crime in your life, you should go check out Vengeance. Uh, killer lovers, uh, killer newlyweds. Killer co-workers, all the episode, all the series are there, and I, I haven't worked on all of them. I only came in last year, but a couple of the shows I worked on are on there, and 
the new season, I'll be on as a 100% editor of a couple of the shows. So, so it's, a, uh, so it's like a, a news crime show. Yeah, like it's a it's, uh, it, it's, uh, they went to alligator land. It was supposed yeah. to be a fun Florida vacation when tragedy struck. Only one of them came back. Only one yeah. of them came back. She, she accidentally ran over him 35 times. <laughs> yes, it is uh, It is just uh, that. I'll I, I, I check it out, dude. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it is what it is, but, you know, it's funny because... We, it, you don't realize like how I, we, I don't realize how little I have to edit because the producers have already written it all out. Get this yeah. soundbite, this, this soundbite, this soundbite. It's not like the Vimby stuff where we'd have to mull through everything and figure out what right. we're going to bar. Like somebody's already done all that for you, and then when I get into the edit, somebody's already archived all the pictures I can use and all the videos, so it's all there, and I don't have to. Yeah, yeah. So I'm you're just telling me a fucking monkey could do your job. No, not a monkey. A I, nutless I, monkey I, I could st- do your I, fucking job. I what... still have to score it, and I still have to figure out uh, arrangement and stuff. But okay. all my tools are there. I don't have to go do all the searching yeah. and go read all the freaking newspapers and figure out the story. It's all right. It's all there for me. So anyway, enough of that. Speaking of story, uh, did you guys hear about the Lord of the Rings? Did anybody hear uh, about what's going on with the Amazon, the Lord of the Rings? Uh, I've heard two stories. One is that it's going to cost, uh, I think the first season is like almost $500 million. Yes. But no, here's the problem. So, the problem is, is that MGM still owns the rights to the fucking books. So he, right. so he can't use, Amazon can't use any of the characters. They can't even call it Middle Earth. So it's really not Lord of the Rings. Which comes to my next thing, my script, my my show. Then what the hold on? Then what the fuck did they pay for? I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure they paid <coughs> a pretty fucking penny for the rights to make this. Thing. So maybe so, they maybe they're using Middle Earth, but they can't use mm-hmm. Bo, they can't reference Bo, Bilbo and all those guys. Dildo Baggins yeah, yeah. and them. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh, is that why uh, Amazon is, is, has been attempting to buy MGM? I'm sure that's one of the reasons. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Supposedly, Amazon wants to pay about $9 billion for MGM. Well, that would be the easiest way out of this, wouldn't it? Well, you would and think they, that. They would get, so basically, they would get Lord of the Rings and James Bond. But you would think, yeah. I mean, you, you don't... Why would you throw five, half a billion dollars at something that you don't have 100% of the rights to. Are you going to spend that much money? Why don't you just pay MGM for the rights to do it? Yeah. Which I thought that... I I don't know. I I, I don't know. But if they just make a Middle-Earth fantasy, like, is that... That's going to ruin everybody else's stuff. Like, my epic that I wrote, that's throwing that out because the Lord of the Rings is the Lord of the Rings, but it's not really the Lord of the Rings. It's going to be like the Middle-Earth... It's going to be like the Middle Earth series. Like, it's... Right. I don't know, man. It's weird. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know. Well, if they they had the rights, if they didn't have the rights, either way, I would never watch it. Yeah. I I know know what side of the fence Lee's on with this one. (laughs) Yeah. That's not a question. We're just talking about it, and I'm bored already. (laughs) All right. Well, then we'll move on. Army of the Dead opens today. The day we're yep. recording, uh, that is uh, Schneider's new zombie flick. Is it four hours long? I, you know what? I don't know. I could okay. find out. I think it's only about two and a half. It's <laughs> got to be more than two. It's a Schneider movie. The problem is um, <laughs> it's got zombies in it. I, I'm okay with zombies. Though. I'm fucking zombied out, dude. Are you? Over the last decade... And I used to be a big zombie guy, but oh, it, I, man, I can't stay. I hate modern zombie shit. Now it's two and a half hours. God Christ, I don't. So think really, it's, it's an hour and a half, but the rest of that's slow motion. <laughs> you might be onto something there. Lee. You may be onto something. Yeah. If you cut, I guarantee if you cut out sixty percent of the slow motion in that movie, it would knock it down very, you know. And the lead, uh, the lead actor is. Batista. Oh yeah, he's the lead. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Are you trying to 
give me reasons not to watch it. I do, I'm going to watch it. it. I, you know me, I'm going to watch it. I love zombie movies, number one. Uh, and two, man, after watching the four and a half uh, hour opus, and then I bought, which I'll get to, the double, uh, I bought 300 and watched it, man. Um, I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm on the Snyder uh, bandwagon, man. Does 300 hold up? Because I've not watched it yet. Uh, yep, it does. Uh, it's very stylistic, and some of it's kind of Michael Bayish, and, uh, you know, a, lo- a lot of it a little bit limp wristed, but at the same time, it still has some good, yeah. it still has some good stuff. Right. Yep. Pretty I, cool. Yep, I liked it. Now, the second one's a piece of garbage. Is it? I've never even seen the second one. Yeah, the second one's a piece of garbage. It's it's nice also to watch uh, Cersei in a sex scene where she actually does show herself. That's kind of nice. That's why you wanted to watch it. Uh, Let's get down to uh, it. Hey, I like Cersei. <laughs> I know you do. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, oh, and uh, well, while I'm on talking about news, uh, uh, Dune, did you see how HBO Max, I guess Dune reneged their deal with HBO Max and you're going to go yeah. see Dune, you're going to have to go to the theaters. Right, exactly. Now that's a movie you should definitely see in the theater. Right? Oh, I agree. I one hundred percent agree. I mean, yeah. But uh, but apparently, uh, Amazon is not the only one. Apparently, Netflix has, has expressed interest in buying Paramount. So within the next couple of years, two of the major, uh, may, well, I would say, MGM is a semi-major movie studio. They're you know, they've been propped up by Sony for about the past ten years. But anyway, two giant studios could be owned by streaming companies within the next couple of years, if that worked out. But this shows how things have changed in the last 10 years. Like 10 years ago, a lot of people didn't even have Netflix. Then Netflix could end up owning movie studios. It's crazy, man. They've got so much fun. And I still don't under... I guess I understand, because they keep every fucking year putting, you know, charging me an extra $3 a year. And I guess at $30 a month, I'm at thirty dollars a month. That's a lot of money coming in. If you, I mean, everybody oh, yeah. has Netflix, huh? Yeah. And some people like uh, subscribe to it and never watch. Like they, oh, I never watch Netflix, but they never they don't cancel their subscription either. So you're right. I'm sure the money they pull in is just obscene. There's probably people out there that haven't watched Netflix and and has, and has had a membership for six years and never watched it once. Don't even realize yeah. it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Sucking them dry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to cancel it. I'm probably going to cancel it and keep HBO Max for a while. That's what happened. I, I, oh, go ahead. I never, I mean, I, uh, in the last month, I probably watched one thing on Netflix. Yeah, I haven't been watching. Well, but that's because I've gotten HBO Max. Yeah, HBO Max has got a lot of good stuff. That's, you'll, that's you'll, the thing. It's you'll like, catch up, though. Once I watch everything on HBO Max... I'll go back to finding stuff on. I don't know, man. Prime, yeah. I'm. <coughs> it's a fucking racket, is what it is. It is, it's and then I spent I spent an extra nine ninety nine for the Haya, uh, which is uh, <laughs> is that real? Like, which is a poli- completely politically incorrect name wait, for wait, a channel. Uh, how are you spending? I have like three dollars a month. What are you paying for high up? Oh wait, it might be for you might be right. I was thinking about Paramount. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, if you're spending ten dollars on high up, whoever is giving you that service is ripping y'all. <laughs> it's giving me the fucking karate in my ass. Yeah. 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 Y
I'm I'm working the uh I'm working the NCAA women's tournament last year, right before the shutdown. And we're all sitting in there, and I'm, this is right after I, I'm talking about doing real estate, and I'm about done with everything, and so I'm looking into it, investing. Anyway, to make a long story short, we get paid two fifty a game, and we're doing say four games a day. So I'm sitting there on my my break, and everybody's a couple of guys are talking about Robin Hood, and they're talking about buying stocks, little stocks, this and this and this. I started thinking about that. I said, that's pretty smart, man. I might do that. I'm going to take one. I'm going to take $250, and I'm going to put it on some stocks on Robinhood. So I go, and I kind of thumbing through it. And so, you know, Netflix is our fucking $600 a share. You know, it's ridiculous. But Snapchat, I guess at the moment, <clears throat> Snapchat was $70 a share. And I said, well, Snapchat's good, and they're getting ready to buy. And when they go buy, I can, I can sell it. So, dummy buys seven sh- shares at, I don't know, let's just say 20 bucks. I can't remember what it was. It was it was less than 20 bucks. And then the pandemic hits. And Daddy-O forgets all about it. <laughs> A month ago I checked. Those fucking shares are worth $89. <laughs> They're worth $89 now. I guess because of the pandemic. Per share? Per share. Nice. I'm like, whoa! Dump these things. So anyway, there you go. it's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, pretty funny. I just completely forgot. There's no telling how much they would have been. They were worth. Um, let's say in December, six months into it, when everybody was really like in. I bet they. Yeah. Snap, I bet it went up like crazy. Anyway, there's my. Uh, I'm. I'm a fucking degenerate investor. <laughs> I'm making money and don't even know it. I, I, hell, I'm investing money and forgetting about it. I'm all over the place. <laughs> anyway, oh, anybody else got news? You got some news, man? I, I know. I I don't have news, but I do have one thing that happened. It's on, I'm, I should have asked. I should have remembered this guy's name. I met the wokest film bro of all time. The who? Uh, Did you just uh, say uh, wokest I, film bro? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Listen, listen how uh, ridiculous this guy was. Okay. It was not, not our film group, but different film group I've owned on Facebook. Uh, somebody had posted about the movie Jojo Rabbit, you know, uh, directed by Joaquin Latiki, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, he's from New Zealand. His dad is uh, Maori, but his mom is actually, and I didn't know this, his mom is actually Russian Jewish. And that's what the guy was upset about that he didn't think he should have directed that movie. He, he thought that a uh, Jewish person of German descent should have directed the movie. And I was like, dude, if we're splitting hairs onto what Jewish person can make, make what movie on the Holocaust, we should just stop making movies. I was like, and wow. I was like dude, I said, I said, you're being too woke for your own good. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah, no, nobody. Nobody gives and a like, shit. Yeah, trust me. It's just like, you know, I don't know. The guy was just, and, and people uh, challenged him on it. He was just ridiculous. And I almost should have, like, screenshotted his comments just so I could have the, the wokest film bro asshole of all time. But anyway, that was, that was the only thing. Yeah. On a bright brighter note, I sent you guys, I think, the last week, the trailer for the Green Knight. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. uh... That was awesome. I'm pretty fucking hyped about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's a story. I, I had a book when I was a small boy of, like, like a collection of, of old British um, short stories and poems and the like, and I remember this story. I, yeah. I, I remember really, like... As I got older and you, you heard more about, like, uh, King Arthur and all, I was always like, oh, man, Gawain's the fucking man because of this. Yeah. And so I, when I saw the trailer for it, saw Dev Patel playing the main character. I, I, it looks fucking great, man, and I hope that it's as good as I want it to be. There was a uh, version I saw when I was a kid where Sean Connery was the Green Knight. That I played on TV a couple times when I was a kid. It was just very, very strange movies. I may have caught that. I don't. I don't yeah. recollect. And the only part I remember is them cutting his head off and then picking it up and he continues to talk. Yeah. yeah. You know. And then, yeah, that movie looks 
you know, it's the first one, like, it kind of looks like, not like a sequel to Excalibur, but that sort of, you know, very adult, like an adult fantasy movie. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I hope, and it's, I, and I hope it's that route, because I'm, I do too. I'm planning on going to see it at the theater. The yeah. theater. Going back to the theater, are you? Everybody's suddenly going back to the theater. I need to pull out of the archives. Nope, it's never going to happen. Nobody's ever going to go again. <laughs> That's so, not what we said. That is. I'm going to find. I'm going to footnote it. I'm going to find it in the archives. You're you're uh, you're going to be over dramatic and say, "Yeah, no, I'll never go back. I don't want death." Look no. at you. Hey, hey, Lee went back, didn't you? I did. I went and saw uh, Wrath of Man. All right. The new guy regiment. Well, how was it? Since we're talking about it. It's, it, I enjoyed it, but it, it was odd to see a Guy Ritchie movie that didn't have any jokes in it. Right. So, oh, so it's very serious. Like Man on Fire it's, serious. The best way I could uh, describe the movie is imagine if there was a robbery and a, a kid, a teenage kid got killed, but that kid's dad turned out to be Kaiser Sose. Right. Because it's not just a standard revenge movie. It's very detailed. Yeah. I enjoyed it, though. It's, uh, yeah. I've watched it again. The first act is kind of wonky. The, 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 the di- you can tell it was that sort of uh, British, that sort of Cockney tough guy dialogue, but it was all American actors trying to say, you know, was, you can tell it was written with that sort of cadence and it just didn't really work, like oh, the yeah, first 15 or 20 minutes. But once you get into the revenge part of it, it was fine. How was your uh, theater experience? I mean, was it... There was, like, there was like seven people in there. Really? Nobody was... Nobody was remotely near us. Okay. Did they have any kind of like odd protocols or anything like that? No, no it was in South Carolina. They don't give a shit. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. It's like Mad Max with the internet in South Carolina. They just it's whatever. That's true. Well, it's got a sixty-seven percent, uh, which is good for a guy, Richie. Well, I, I, I know. I know you guys don't look at Rotten Tomatoes. I don't either. But Rotten Tomatoes has been infamous for giving Guy Richie, uh, you know, the proverbial oh, yeah. shaft. So, well, the, prover- the proverbial wrath in his ass. He's deserved it a couple of times. Oh, yes. I mean, especially that one with Madonna. Isn't that the one where he went with Madonna and Brad oh, Pitt? Yeah. Out the sea or something? Out the, the sea. Island, but... Yeah. Oh, God damn. Oh, what the hell was that? Well, that was when he was dating her, though, right? He's probably just trying yeah. to... You gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. Yes, you gotta do what you gotta do. Speaking of hot chicks, who are we doing first? Perdita? Durango, let's, let's, get, let's get Mortal Kombat out of the way. All right, let's get Mortal Kombat out of the way. Sucked. Okay, should we get to Perdita yeah. Durango? <laughs> what the fuck was that? The fi- yes. I tell you what, Mike D, Mike D said it, and he was absolutely right. He said it was a piece of shit. But what sucks is they it's they they gave you a hard on, they stroked it a bit, and then they just stopped. Like the first 15 oh, the first minutes, minutes or 20 right. minutes, you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then it went to shit. Yeah. I, yeah, it's like maybe 10 minutes in, I was like, they're doing it. They're really, it's going to happen. Right. And yeah. they kind of built it up like they're going to have this tournament, this stuff's going to happen, and then none of it happened. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's like, nothing happened that should have happened in it. All you have to do is have a tournament. And they just wouldn't fucking do it. Yep. They wouldn't do it. I guess it's a pre-tournament movie. Uh, so for Mortal Kombat, the real tournament is going to be the next yeah. one? I guess so, which is, you know... <clears throat> and the main character's terrible. I mean, he's... I don't know. His Aquaman armor at the end, was I thought, was completely... Didn't make any sense. Uh, why are there... Why, why are they having to make up a, a fucking dude? Like, Mortal Kombat in its heyday, there were like 30 goddamn characters to choose from. Right. Why yeah. the fuck? I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Well, oh, the idea is that, uh, when, car- when movies do that, the kind of idea is that they're introducing the world and, you know, sort of that character is the audience. No, what you know what they for. did? But you know, it just sucks. You know why they made that movie? I'll tell you why okay. they made that fucking movie. Because my son sat next to me and watched that movie, and at the end of it, he was like, I fucking love that movie. And he went into his PlayStation, and he went into his wallet, and he gave me 40 bucks, and he said, I'm buying the game. And he's called me three times needing fucking PlayStation money to upgrade and unlock characters. 
so him and his buddies online can keep playing Mortal Kombat. That's all they did. They said, let's throw together a movie so we can sell this new fucking video game. That's what they did. And the new video game is awesome. The beauty of the movies like Enter the Dragon and Bloodsport is the tournament... You don't really need a plot because the tournament is the plot. Right. Right. I mean, that's so the beauty of it. Why not have all these guys uh, travel to the tournament and have the tournament? And you have your one main guy either win or not win. That's what yeah. I was fucking expecting. Not what I got. Yeah. yeah, it's it was it was it was gone awful. And man, I'll tell you what It was I, just mortal exposition. It, it really was and it was so like the the what's his name? The white guy? What's the what's the character's name? I just heard. Which one? Lost it. The one, the guy that that the the the. Never mind. Okay. I'll just, but you'll tell me when I tell the story. But man, when I mean we're we're loaded up with cuss words on this podcast, and I've been known to throw the f bomb. But that dude, like when it was it was. Talk about Kano. Oh, yeah, Kano. My ears were physically. All hurting. he said was fuck. Yeah, like physically hurting. It's like it's like in the script as it's as it's being. Oh, I'm sure they didn't write that many. I'm sure that was improv. But it's so there. It's like it. If if your shit is so fucking bad that it's necessary to say fuck at the beginning or end of every goddamn sentence that you have in this thing that you've written, it's a fucking failure. It doesn't matter how good the action is because it was fucking kicked in the balls. Harder than any character in the fucking movie was the dialogue. And it was the structure fucking of the story. kicked in the fucking balls so many fucking times, and I can't fucking believe it. I mean, that's it's horrible. It was horrible. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, does he really have to say that one more time? Yeah. I... And so you didn't like it, Lee? No, I didn't like it. No. I mean, some of the action was cool, but it just. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like, man, you take a simple idea like Lee's talking about, just do the fucking tournament, and it's like, they, it, that's not enough for you. If that's not enough for you, then they just did. don't fucking do it. But they've done that movie. They've done that movie twice, hadn't they? They did it 25 fucking years ago, man. That's true. Could have done it again with... You we know, knew what we were getting ourselves into. It's like watching a snoot. Right. It's like watching but a awesome. Charlie Brown movie. Yeah. You know exactly what you're going to get. But if they, uh, and I'm sure it's been fairly successful. It was, you know, the week it came out, it was number one at the box office. And if they're gonna, and I'm sure they're gonna make another one, like Garrett said, just to sell more video games. And that's fine, because that's, I mean, you know, movies are about making money at the end of the day. But all they have to do, because they tease Johnny Cage at the end of the, uh, in the movie, all they have to do is cast Scott Atkins as Johnny Cage. And Lee will watch that's it. All, and so will that's I. All they, that's, all they, that's all they gotta do. You know? And because of that, they definitely won't fucking do it. And, well, that's true. And then just make it about the tournament. And then, you know. Then you might have yeah. something. Yeah. You might have something. Yeah. It's not It's not terms of endearment. It's Mortal Kombat. It shouldn't be that easy that, you know, it shouldn't be that hard to make one. Right. Especially when you have billions of dollars. Yeah. But anyway, that's all I'm saying about that. The, 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 the first 15 minutes was great. No, well, the first 50 minutes is great. The opening scene was amazing. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. It's a short film. That would be, you know, yeah. I mean, and, and they, you know, they cast two actors who are really great. You know, Joe, Joe Tassim, who was in The Night Comes First in the Raid movies. Yep. And uh, Hadori uh, Sadata, who we've talked about a lot on the show. He's in uh, uh, Ninja and the Dragon Den and, you know, other movies we've talked about. But, you know, he's, not, he's in the movie like seven minutes. Yeah. You know, and I don't, you know, it's just, the whole movie's a shit show, and, you know. Anyway. Yeah. They, they, made, they, they made a movie, they made a movie with demon ninjas, and it was boring. Yeah. <laughs> was it worse anyway. than Feast? Uh, it was pretty close, wasn't it? Uh, mm, kind of got me with that. I, I wouldn't say so, but it's, you know... It's more disappointing than, than just terrible. It's yeah. uh, you know, like, like you know, just make the movie. You know, anyway. Yeah. Okay. There's the crickets. Yeah. You know, you know, the yeah. movies are bad, but we all hate it. And there's crickets. I just, I mean, there's yeah. nothing really else to say about it. Yeah. There's it's... nothing to say. Let's get to talking about a giant eighteen wheeler full of fetuses. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's let's do it. Actual movie this episode. You want to introduce it? Sure. It's uh, from 1997. It has two titles. One, the, the title I originally saw it uh, uh, under was Dance with the Devil. But the, uh, I guess the actual title is uh, Prison Durango, which it's, uh, we watched, about a year and a half ago, we reviewed Wild at Heart. And in Wild at Heart, it's Isabella Rossellini plays the uh, main character from this movie. This takes place after uh, Wild at Heart in the, the, the series of novels that these two movies take place in. And uh, so she gets, uh, the character of Prison Durango gets out of jail from the, uh, events of Wild Heart and her sister has died. And her sister wants her to take her ashes to Mexico to scatter them. And on her way to do this, she meets Harvey Alvarez's character, who is a drug dealer, uh, a Santerista priest, and just a bank robber, and uh, just a terrible human being. You know. And as is she, as is free to drink. And they proceed to fall in love, and then they decide, and during, she, after she sees one of his Santerista ceremonies. They're going to kidnap and sacrifice a yep, uh, these two sort of yuppie teenagers. Uh, but while this is all going on, uh, Mr. Santos, who's also that character of the crime boss, is also in Wild at Heart. He's, he's the old guy in the toilet in Wild at Heart. Yeah. Hires uh, Harvey Albert Dimp's character to drive an 18-wheeler <laughs> full of aborted fetuses to Las Vegas, where they're going to be ground up and used in Illegal, illegal makeup, or used, uh, made illegally into makeup. Into makeup. And there's a whole bunch of characters, people who want revenge on Harvey Bardem's character. There's, it's very complicated. It's maybe but, the scummiest love story in cinema history. But it's a minor masterpiece. It was uh, uh, Alex Steele and Glacia, who we covered on one of the first episodes of this show, his, his movie, Bitchin' and Bitchin'. This was his first English language movie. They thought this was going to break him into uh, American filmmaking, and uh, it didn't happen, because the movie's completely insane. But yeah. I love it! Huh? But I love it! I do, too. I do, too. But it, I, I can't see, in 1997, I can't see how they were like, because, you know, you had Robert Rodriguez, you had... Uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino. I, yeah, I mean, you had all these indie, and you had a lot of Spanish language filmmakers coming out, you know, from Spain to South America. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, I guess they thought he was going to be the next big guy. And maybe had this come out about 93, 94, you know, about the time of Pulp Fiction, Amer uh, uh, National Born Killers, maybe it would have been better received. But this was in the late 90s, and it just, yeah. What do you guys think? Because I, I, I thought this would be probably 20 I bet, look, before anything's said, I bet a million dollars Doug fucking hated it. I mean, you're not far off. Really? I, I didn't yeah. I didn't love it. And, and I think the main reason is why, like Lee said, it, it it's like, had I seen this, <laughs> had I seen this in 96 or 97, 97 I guess when it came out, I probably, I'd, most definitely would have enjoyed it quite a bit more, and it would be like one of those, like, oh, man, you know, it's fucking Perdita Durango. You remember that scene, you know, whatever. Because that happens with a lot of movies. You'll go back and watch a scene that was special to you at one time, and then you go back 25 years later and look at it, and you're like, eh, it didn't really work. That's this movie to me. It not it, Very little of it worked or held up 23 years, 24 years later. I just didn't. I, I, it just was too... I don't know, man. I don't know what the is word it for it is. Face? What's that? You think the movie's too in your face? Because almost everything about it is unpleasant. Yeah, I, I guess. I, look, number one, I, I really like Rosie Perez. I really do. But she was not a good choice in this, in my estimation. You're crazy. Bardem was fantastic. He's always good as a terrible movie. Exactly. He, he was fun. Um, Gandolfini, Gandolf, was, Gandolfini the, was the best, best part, part of, the movie. of the whole movie. He's the best character of the movie. And he's like a, he's almost like the Terminator. Like he's unkillable. You just can't take he him out. He gets hit dude. by the car. And he's he's like, like, ah, motherfucker. Like I loved his character so much. That's what kept me invested yeah. in the movie more than than Bardem and per, uh, Perez's like 
weird love thing, I guess. I mean, I... Yeah. Because it's so... It jumps around from... It's almost like when an idea is introduced in a conversation, it immediately jumps to that in the next scene. And that's how the movie is built. And it's really kind of hard to follow. I mean, I'd say 30 minutes in, I, I, I really kind of stopped paying that much attention to it. I was watching it, but not... You weren't invested. Not even a little bit. My favorite part of the entire movie, though, is, is was the end. When Bardem does that, Burt Lancaster death scene, that shit was fucking perfect. And I was like, damn, if the movie could have had more of that, you'd, you'd have really had something, because that to me was showing some of uh, De La Iglesias' brilliance as a filmmaker, how well that, that was done, but the rest of it, it was almost like, it's like, man, let's just see how fucking crazy we can go. And right. some of it worked, and some of it didn't. Um, the, the Santeria ceremonies, the couple times that they you know, he rips the heart out of that dude and all. It sounds like it would be cool when I'm talking about it, but watching it, I was just kind of like, eh. And that that's what it was for me. It was a, eh. It's a one-time watch, like, on a different level than Mortal Kombat, but I'll never watch either of these two movies again. There's no reason to it for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Gary? You know me, man. That kind of stuff right there, I love. Yes, yeah. I do. I do. Listen, I do agree with Doug. It's all. It is all over the place. It's. I, do, I agree with you. It's very unpleasant. But again, I'm the filmmaker, so that to me, it's like it's. Back then, I could only imagine, you know, people like walking out of the theater. Yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. Like during the when he rapes the girl, like yeah, I could just see right. people going, "Oh, I can't do this." I, I can't imagine them getting notes from the producer on this movie. Oh, I agree. Uh, yeah. Like, like, what should we do? Like, like I don't know. I can't like it'll tell you like, oh, we're gonna invest in this movie. Uh, Rose Brist. Rosie Brist. She was just nominated for an Oscar. You know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then you're like, what do you think? I don't know. Burn it. Like, it's yeah. Like somebody, you just invested a million dollars in this movie, like. Does yeah. there, yeah, does there have to be so much sex? There's have to be so much that, you know, I could just see them. Uh, yeah. But I, it, it's yeah. a little rapey. I mean, it's it does rapes the oh, yeah. fucking, t- the teenage fucking American God, dude. what I wouldn't give to have been that guy. And I, was that here the Graham's sister? I don't know. Yeah. Is it, yeah, was, was it? Was. Yeah. yeah I kept looking at her and I was like, I was like, God damn, that looks like she could be Heather Graham's fucking relative. She never... It is, Amy Graham. Okay. Right. She, and yeah. unfortunately for her, she never did another movie after this. Not that I can recall. No. She's one of the girls at the gas station at the beginning from Dusk Till Dawn and this and not much else. Okay. Yeah. I didn't think but she yeah. was bad. No, no, no yeah. it wasn't bad. Um... I mean, the first five seconds, you get to see Rosie Perez, like, completely naked in a bed, and a tiger pulls the silk off of her, and you're just like, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> she looks so good, man. She is so yummy. Yeah. I, just just to watch her be yummy for two hours, I'm okay with She it. just, th- look, this character of hers doesn't come across, like, her playing this, it just was not believable. Who do, so who should we cast in that? Somebody else. Somebody else. She just didn't work for me. Like, I, I don't know, man. It just didn't work. I can imagine. The only other actress at that time, I think, that would have got cast would probably been Selma Hayek. And I that, can't say. I mean, they're the only two at that time in Hollywood. I can't think of anybody else. And that might have worked. Yeah. But this, just for me, it just didn't. And I was like, eh. Yeah. But Bardem was fucking great. I, I saw a quote. You know, he, he was talking about how much he hates violence. And really, up until just a couple of years ago, as, as I guess his character in Skyfall, or not Skyfall, which one is it with Bourdain? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no kind Sky, of, yeah, Skyfall, yeah, Skyfall. Bond, yes. But prior to that, this is really the only kind of movie, uh, like, of any kind of violence you know, and he's like, yeah. look, I, I I hate fucking violence. I hate violence in movies. But he's like, I'm really fucking proud of this movie. You know, and I'm glad that I did it. But, you know, he's kind of tried to stay away from these roles. He he was perfect in this role. And no, yeah. con- no country for old men. He was... Well, maybe that nice. quote came up 
Yeah, before. Before. Because... He won an Oscar for that, didn't he? Or no, oh, maybe yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he did. I yeah. did. But, I mean, but, he's yeah. just so fucking out of control in this. And his hair is just so fucking gloriously fucking crazy. <laughs> and just, all of that was amazing. He, 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 between him and Gandolfini, they carried the movie, the... The Americans and, and Rosie Perez kind of dragged it down because, to me, it was just like, come on, like, something. Like, what are y'all doing? You're just, there's nothing. You know, like, Lee's talking about, like, this 18-wheeler full of fucking dead fetuses. That sounds amazing. But it just didn't, like, I kept waiting on it to, like, be something in this. Or, like, cry, yeah. And yeah. It, it wasn't, you know. Like, they had the little bait, like, the little fetus, like, at the end of the... Uh, I, I guess it's like the movie poster or whatever. Yeah. And it just, it, it's like, you can't, you can't put a fucking dead fetus on your fucking poster and not, like, give me some fucking dead fetus. Yeah, that truck should have wrecked. <laughs> there just wasn't enough dead fetus. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying. <laughs> as fucking bad as that sounds. But, you know, it's like the weird parts of it were very weird, some of it, and some of it was just kind of like, eh. Almost, maybe it just didn't live up to Garrick's you know, building it up. Right. And I guess my expectation for it was maybe yeah. higher than it should have been. But okay. one one thing that I have you watched any of the the coins, thirty coins? Yes, I watched. Yes, I watched the first two episodes. Okay. One thing that I did notice in this, and I, I remember it from Witching and Bitching with with the glaciers, and I don't know why. And it's it, it does the same thing in in thirty coins. You remember in like uh, Terminator Two, it would be like that. Dan, Dan. Dan, dan, dan. Like big time, like music oh, yeah. stuff in the background. That's in every motherfucking thing that this cat makes. And yeah. I, th- I thought it was really odd considering when this was made in 30 coins. You know, we're talking 20 some years, but the way he does like that background sound in these big scenes, it's fucking T2. And I just think that's so fucking weird for such yeah. an original. Filmmaker, a guy that I really like. I like the way he makes movies. I like that they're all different. But to have that score in in two movies that are twenty some years apart, that was so similar that I immediately picked up on it in both things that I watched. I thought that was really fucking weird. And next time you watch yeah. one of his movies, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Lee, look for that and you'll notice it immediately. Yeah, yeah. Have I, you seen uh, the Last Circus? No. That's one of my favorite movies of his. It is completely insane. Okay. I've got a list. I've got a list of some of his stuff I need to check out. Yeah. It's uh that that's the movie that's the most him. Okay. Like that's just yeah it's yeah I can't even really I it would take me ten minutes to explain the plot. I got you. You know, and uh, it's probably more insane than this movie. Okay. It may and, be more uh, for me. Yeah. But yeah, it's just I don't think he'll ever. He'll never break in America. He's just too... I think the HBO show is as mainstream as he's going to get. You know, I don't know. He's just... He's too weird. Once you... Yeah. Yeah. Once you get through all of 30 Coins, we'll revisit this. Yeah. Because I, I definitely want to yeah. hear what that you have to say. Episode, that, that first 10 minutes, though, when the guy walks in the bank and just massacres everybody, that's how you start a show. Yeah. Oh, there... Yeah, I mean... Yeah. The, yeah, there's a lot to love from it. There really is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but no, but I enjoyed this movie. It's not my favorite of his movies, you know. But it's I, I find it odd that this is his first English language movie. I mentioned before that he almost directed Doom, uh, the video game with Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Uh, but about a year or so before this, that, that was supposed to be his first English language movie. Now, I'm sure that would have gone horribly. Just him making a big budget movie, I can't imagine that. Yeah. No, but I dig this movie. I do too. I'll watch it. I'd watch it again. Yeah. All right, well, we've been all for six weeks, so I don't want a big ten, ten lister of uh, stuff you've seen. So, here, you know what? Uh, I'll start. Okay. Well, to get rid of Mortal Kombat, uh, get rid of the bad taste in my mouth for Mortal Kombat, uh, I, um, I watched a movie... Some of my favorite movies of, uh, you know, of all time uh, are Jackie Chan's movies. And uh, oh, Sa- yeah. Samuel Hung and him's uh, Project A was on the list. Oh, yeah. 
You what? the best pirate movie ever? The, the, yeah, I was going to say, the best swashbuckling kung fu movie yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, it was great, and it, it definitely cleansed my palate after the terrible Mortal Kombat. Yeah, probably uh, is great. Yeah, and then I watched Rumble in the Bronx. Uh, okay. Which uh, led me, you know, another another one of Jackie Chan's great uh, films. And then I finally did it. I finally, I finally did it. I finally sat down and watched Warrior, and I love it. Oh, the show? The show, yep. I love it. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for, I'm, I don't know if they, you know, they, they weren't, they were talking about no season three. I don't know no, if this Asian hate thing, yeah, I know, I, but that's what I'm saying, like, they were saying no, but then all this a, uh, Asian hate stuff came out and suddenly they were, I don't know if HBO said, hey, let's just do another one because we need to, whatever they did, whatever they decided to, to do a third season, I'm happy for it because it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it, a really good show. It really is, like the production design and everything, based on now, our, based on Bruce Lee's stuff. Now, the thing, one thing I love is how they do the uh, the language in the movie because all the Chinese people, ninety percent of them don't speak English. When you first see a, a group of Chinese people talking, they're speaking in Chinese, but the camera spins around them, and as it goes, it slowly tra- it, it goes to English. Then the actors are just speaking English. Like, it's done, handled in a very, you know, like how the, uh, actually, the Chinese would just speak English, but to the white people in the show, they're hearing Chinese. Yeah, oh, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's handled in a very cool way. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Uh, the, I like the plots. The, I mean, the production value is fantastic. Yeah. The fights it are great. great. Yeah, I love it. I've watched, uh, I've watched the first season and second season, and I've started the first season again. Uh, yeah, it stands up there with like Yellowstone and True Detective and Game of Thrones with me. Not not nearly as good as Game of Thrones on, not quite as good as True Detective or Yellowstone. But however, for TV lately, it's up there for sure. But it has the same quality throughout. I don't think there's much of a drop off in the, between the first and second season. No, absolutely. I they're both excellent. Absolutely no drop off. Yeah. All right, then I watched uh, 300. Uh, like we said, it, it holds up. It's great. Um, the second one's terrible. Did you watch that too? Yeah. Of course you did. Well, the reason is is I had to buy it, and uh, the first one for with Apple was nine ninety nine, and you can get both of them for twelve ninety nine. So why would why would you? You don't still have your VHA? VHS tape of 300? I have my VHS tape. Okay. I've got the comic, the original comic book of it. <laughs> yep. uh, but no, it, yeah, it still holds out. Early Snyder film. Maybe his first one, wasn't it? Uh, no, the first one was uh, Do- uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake. Oh, yeah, that's right. So this was a close second. Which I actually yeah. like that. Actually like that. The, fir- the first 15 minutes of the Dawn of the Dead remake are perfect. The pre-title sequence. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's probably his, I mean, that's amazing, like, that's how you like we talk about the first 10 minutes of uh, Mortal Kombat. If that was just a short film, that would just be amazing. Yeah. What'd you watch, Doug? I watched a couple of things. I I had talked about doing this a while back, and it's been so long since we've been together, and I ha- had an opportunity to do it, so I did it. I had a sequel battle. I found Caddyshack Part 2. And I put it up against European Vacation. Okay? Jesus, okay. you got way too much time on your hands. God damn, this was a fucking month ago, dude. <laughs> it was like a Saturday night. Caddyshack 2 um, is pretty fucking bad. Jackie Mason, right? Is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is just, man, wow. Yeah. I, I don't even know how he even got into this because he's not funny. Nothing about uh, that. Because Dangerfield said no. Right. And I, for yeah. good reason. Um, had a couple of, of funny parts, um, but really was a... Bill Murray in that one? Uh, no, but Dan Aykroyd is. <laughs> and uh, it's the worst, uh, it's the worst fucking Aykroyd after that, he should have just said, fuck it, I'm not going to do anything anymore because he is fucking 
horrible in it. But Robert Stack is fucking amazing as kind of like the, you know, the principal bad guy. He he is actually very, very good in it. Ha. Huh. And look, I'm not going to say, hey, go back and, and rewatch it, but I'm just saying, if you're a big Robert Stack guy like I am, you could suffer through the other bullshit just to see him. He gives a fucking master class. I'm just saying. He's that good. Love his fucking voice and his mannerisms. <laughs> I've never heard anybody refer to themselves as a big Robert Stack guy. I just had this flash in my head of Doug Tombstone said, husband, father, Robert Stack. Big Robert Stack guy. Yeah. European vacation? You want to talk about fucking holding up? Look, it's still funny. It's it's It was a fucking landslide as to which one I preferred more. And maybe it's because I've seen European vacation more times than I'd like to admit, especially in my youth. But it's still hilarious. It's fucking great. I love it. And it's kind of a forgotten sequel, you know, because of Vacation being what it was. But I actually enjoy the European version quite a bit. Other thing I watched, um, Death Proof, just because I saw it was on and I was like, it seemed like the last time we were talking, I was talking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did a bunch of Quentin Tarantino movies. I sure. love it. I love it so much more now than I did when I watched it the first time. Oh, yeah. 100%. Really? Yeah. Kind, of, kind of like Jackie Brown. I think I just, it's like, it's like when I saw it the first time, I, it, it just didn't, I, I don't know. I, I think it's because the opening scene at the bar is like 45 goddamn minutes yeah. long, and, and it just kind of soured me on it, but rewatching it. I fucking yeah. love every single thing about this. That freaking car wreck is the shit. Zoe dude. Bell is just fucking amazing, dude. Yeah. I love her <laughs> I love her so fucking much, dude. Yeah, she's great. And there's her, about three dialogue scenes you could cut out of that and it'd be perfect. I would agree there's with just, you. Yeah. There's just like like the one where they're talking about the rave or whatever. Yeah. Just, that's the only Quentin Tarantino movie where I look at my watch. Where I'm just like, ugh. Yeah. Okay. Like they're just it's just nothingness. Like what people who don't like Tarantino movies talk about like the the sort of, you know, self the self aware dialogue and everything, the right. you know, like the uh the Madonna uh speech in Red Dogs. This is the movie. this is the movie they're talking about. Because it's you know there's a lot of cool stuff in it. But also there's about twenty minutes that can be clipped out of it. Oh, absolutely. I still, though, watching it this last time, I think I enjoyed it more than it, any other time that I've seen it. I, I was like, because I, I knew, because I guess I expected that scene. I knew it was coming. It was like, okay, you can get up and go get a drink, and you know, you need right. to do. You That's know, a good point. I wasn't sitting there like watching on the edge of my seat like I was prior times watching it because I knew what to expect. But it's still fucking yeah. amazing. Fucking Kurt Russell is the shit, dude. Yeah. I fucking love him so much. I'm so glad that he's, you know. Was in this, and, and then as the the narrator of fucking Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and the little role that he played in, I just fucking love him. And he's John Ruth, the fucking hangman. And I, man, I, I love those fucking roles for him, dude. Oh, yeah. He's just, I, I love that guy so fucking much. I hate that oh, yeah. we missed like a decade of his shit from like the late... Mid nineties to fucking like mid two thousands, like I don't even know what the fuck he was doing. He wasn't in anything. He was in shit and comedy uh, over like Overboard with Goldie Hawn, wasn't he in that? Hey, what uh, oh, shit talk? What, fucking what the original movie? Overboard motherfucker. What was that movie? Soldier. He was in. I went and saw that at the movie theater. He yeah. got very. He got. Uh, he got injured making that movie, and I, at that point, he was just like, "I have a lot of money. I don't need to do this shit anymore." Yeah, I'm good. And he was like. That was sort of his, like, he was, like, sort of waving goodbye to being an action league. Because apparently he got, like, he blew his knee out or something. And he was just like, fuck it. And then he just, I guess after a while, after a few years, he just didn't miss it. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, what was that, uh, the Cameron Crow movie he was in where he was Tom, Tom Cruise's lawyer? What's that movie? Shit. The, where, uh, ah, oh, shit. Vanilla Sky. Vanilla Sky, yeah, that God. was the movie where he was like, oh, this was fun. Like, he's like, uh, like you know, Tom Cruise's lawyer, but then he turns out to be a, a computer or something. Yeah, but he didn't have to do, he didn't have to be Snake Plissken. Exactly. He was like, he was like, I'm just wearing a suit. It's air conditioned. <laughs> no, no, it's exploding. <laughs> Fine. You know. Yeah. But I like him in this and, uh, because he's smooth and he's a badass. But 
Only on the surface. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like a lot of tough guys are, you know. Yeah. Right. Uh, I just love that that role for him. Anyway, that's what I watched. Okay, very cool. I watched, uh, well, I was in the mind, so I watched a few things, but, uh, so, uh, since you, you were talking about Jackie, uh, Jackie Chan, Gary, I rewatched, I have not seen it since VHS. John Woo's first American movie, Hard Target, with Jean Claude Van Damme. Yes! Here's where, the movie went, here's where the movie went wrong. This is why, uh, uh, Face Off and, uh, Broken Arrow were both much more successful movies. Those are American movies. Hard Target is just a Hong Kong movie with white people. Like, there are so many stunts that are just insane in this movie. Like, it just, it's ridiculous. Like, at one point, Lance, Lance Henderson just firing guns while on fire. You know, and uh, I think probably when that movie came out, he was like, okay, I have to kind of got to, the stuff that you can do in Hong Kong, I kind of got to throttle that back for American audiences. Because Hard Target, is, like I said, it's just, it's a ridiculous movie. Everything about it. But if it was, uh, you know, Chatty and Fat, it was like 1992, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know. I'd be like, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it's John Woo movie. But in America, it just seems kind of odd. Right. You know. Well, like, but, pro, uh, pro, like Project A. Project A is an American movie. is one of the dumbest movies you've ever seen. It's, exactly. wor- it's worse than Caddyshack 2, but because it's got Samo and frickin' Jackie and... Right. They're doing their yeah. they're doing their Jackie thing. It's fucking perfect. Yeah. And yeah, it's, like, it's like spaghetti westerns. If it was if John Wayne was in a spaghetti western, it would just be odd. Yeah, it'd just be like why is everybody staring at each other for five minutes before they shoot? You know, it would just seem you know it just wouldn't work. But anyway, and with all that uh, we had a, a double feature. Uh, Bonnie picked the movie, and I picked the movie. Uh, we started one of her first movies, her favorite movies, uh, the. Sean Penn directed End of the Wild. Oh, so good. Yeah. Uh, you hated it. Which, that's one of her favorite movies. And, uh... I love you, Lee. God, I love how, how delicately you just addressed that. It was fantastic. Yeah, and I just... I just want... Like, everything he does is wrong. You know? Like, so when everybody tries to help... He, if he had accepted one of those people's help, he would be alive. Oh, I agree. Oh, yeah, you're talking about uh, Chris. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah. his name? Canlis. Yes. Canlis, yeah. Yeah, and it's like uh, how, how Holbrook's character is. How Holbrook should have won an Oscar for that movie. I'll just be honest with you. Yeah, it was so was good. Really best supporting actor that, uh, that year. They stole it from Hal Holbrook. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a beautifully made movie, and, you know. Sean Penn is I, good, I, man. He should do more. I love The Crossing Guard. Yeah. I love the crossing guard. Like he's, but he when he makes movies, they're good. I don't know why he yeah. doesn't do them more than he does. Because he's out saving the world, dude. He's got other shit. He's one of those guys. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah, Into the Wild. Vince Vaughn, that was Vince Vaughn's best. I think, you know, yeah, Vince Vaughn, Vince Vaughn always plays Vince Vaughn. This was the most pulled down and filtered right. Vince Vaughn that's ever been. Yeah. But, but you're right. I would like to read that book and see if. Because if, if the book is, and I, I can imagine Sean Penn probably stay pretty true to the book. There was a couple of times where taking the help would have saved him. Like, oh, oh every time. Every time. Like, dude. He was, he was, uh, like uh, the guy who, uh, at the beginning of the movie, when he gets out of the truck, when he's walking towards the bus. I know in reality that guy was like, man, let me take you into town. I'll buy you a tent. I'll buy you all this stuff. And he was like, no, nah, man, i got to do it on my own. Like, it was just basically... He didn't realize he was committing suicide. Yeah, I mean, and, even even good, even um, like people that go camping and people that know how to do this. This guy wasn't that, and he goes out and I mean, he's in the middle of summer. He's killing a moose. He doesn't know how to store meat. Like he yeah, didn't make. Yeah. He didn't do research. Yeah, if I yeah. was going to do that, I would fucking. Pre- I, I mean, I'm preparing for an 18 mile race in September, and I'm having to run 50 miles a week. And it's killing right. me, but I have to do it. This guy was like, oh, I'm just going to go do all this, and it's going to work. Like, you yeah. don't go live in the fucking wilderness of Alaska yeah. with a freaking, with a four-year degree and think yeah. that you're going to fucking survive. He was the only person in the movie that didn't see it coming. Yeah, right. Yeah. That was my biggest takeaway is it's like, like Lee said, you're watching this kid commit suicide from the very moment he steps 
out yeah. of that truck at the very beginning of the movie because every fucking decision that he made led him to his death. Every single one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the second I, movie we watched uh, we, uh, was Ghoulies 2, which you found on HBO Max. You came with fucking Ghoulies 2? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, fucking, when we were going through HBO Max, I was like... Is that the one with the little ghoulie with his head hanging out of the toilet, or is that the first one? That's the first one. Okay. The second one is... I, I prefer the second one. The second one takes place at a carnival. It's just a fun movie. Okay. It's fucking, you know... It's one of my favorite Gremlins rip-offs, and, you know... And, uh, after that, look at the time. All right, well, that's it for this week. <laughs> All right, we'll get to, uh, we'll get back. Did to Bonnie you. appreciate Ghoulies too? <laughs> yeah, she did. What? Okay. Oh my She's god. She's as good of a bullshitter as you are, then. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, Ghoulies too. You know what? That's gonna be the fucking pick a flick next week. I'm gonna watch Ghoulies too. I'm gonna see if I can get through it. Yeah. You know what? I bet it's not that bad if I can remember it correctly. <laughs> I see hey. that. Yeah. Fucking Gooley too. You know, uh, I've fucking forgotten the rest of it. I, I watched Wrath of Man and a couple other things, and that's pretty much it. Gooley, okay. you watched fucking Gooley's too. Date night. Oh, I did. Date night. Date night. night. It's not even on a drive through This motherfucker comes. Not on. <laughs> God damn. I love it. I Not love even it so on much. Billy Bob's fucking drive-in. Jesus. Jody had gotten up and been like, what nah, I'm not, I'm not watching this. Go- I'll go to something and look at her, like some like obscure fucking weird shit like that, and she just, she didn't have to say anything. She just looks at me as like, shaking her head. She knows, like, that I know not to even try it. But good on you for trying it. Go. I go- watched the whole movie. I know. Gullies too. Yeah. Holy shit. I love it. That's amazing. All right. Well, uh, we have a pick a flick. I have a pick a flick. We'll never do better. I know I won't. I can't even get a fucking short script written. Hey, all right. Pick a flick this week comes from me. Uh, if you've seen, if you like Frank Miller's comic master, or he's a comic uh, book master, and he... Uh, Schneider did 300, Robert Rodriguez covered Sin City. And this is a pretty cool little story. Robert Rodriguez wanted Frank Miller to help him direct it. The DGA said, hell no, you can't do that. Frank Miller has to have this, this, and this in order. We know who he is, but in order to direct, he has to have this, this, and this. So Robert Rodriguez said, well, I don't need my director skilled. And he shot it at, you know, uh, to, he... Uh, he canceled his uh, Directors Guild of America memberships so that he so that he would not be under that umbrella and he could co-direct with Frank Miller. It's Sin City. It's more stylized than 300, and it's fucking awesome. And if you've ever if you've ever read the comic book, if you've never read the comic book, you may hate the movie. But if you've read the comic book and you've seen the comic book, it's a fucking comic masterpiece that nobody remembers. Bruce Willis, Jessica Alba, and shot yeah. all in black and white. The blood. Brittany Murphy. Brittany Murphy. You know that's every time I see her in a thing in a in a movie, she's kind of like River Phoenix. Like every time I see those those uh, her movies, it's such such a bummer. She was so good. Everything she did, she was really good at. Yeah, she was good. And then she was what twenty eight when she died. Yeah, twenty eight. I mean, yeah, that sucks. It's terrible. Okay, so there you go. Sin City. So next week, oh. next week, we're going to try to cover, if we don't get uh, covered up, we're going to try to cover first-time directors. Start with Coen Brothers, Blood Simple, then uh, Hard Eight, P.T. Anderson, and then Peter Jackson's Bad Taste. I like it. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. All right, well, uh, so for anybody, uh, we'll do a little recap here. Don't watch Mortal Kombat. Don't waste your time. Uh, watch Perdita Durango maybe once if you want to give it a go. <laughs> if you want to see, if you want to see Rosie Perez in her sexiest, you should watch this movie. Uh, Ghoulies Two is a good date night movie. <laughs> oh, I wish that quote for me was on the Blu-ray. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Bridges says, what a great date night movie. Amazing. Amazing date night movie. That's not got to be me. Doug hates, Doug hates zombie movies, so he won't be watching Army of the Dead this evening. And HBO Max reneges on their deals. There you go. There's number 104 in a nutshell. We'll see you next week.